Hey guys, it's the start of the new year, which means it's time for a new desk setup refresh. Over the holidays, I've upgraded a lot of gear to help my workflow, and I'm pretty happy with the end result. I set up my desk pretty much all day as I use it for university work, entertainment, and making YouTube videos like this. Also, affiliate links for all the products mentioned in the video will be down below in the description. They really help out the channel at no extra cost to you. But anyways, let's get started with the desk. I have an IKEA salvage kitchen countertop sitting on top of two Alex jars, which is commonly known as the IKEA desk hack, and I'm sure you've seen many YouTubers rocking the setup. I chose a laminate oak finish for the countertop because I love the shade of the oak finish and the laminate wood makes the desk much more durable than the cheap office tabletops. And because it's more solid, the tabletop doesn't droop down in the middle, but I still put a cheap Adel's table leg in the middle just in case. The desk is also around 74 inches long and 26 inches deep. I wish it was a little deeper, but it's the perfect size for my little bedroom. And on the sides, I have two classic Alex drawers in white to store my camera gear, some everyday items, and everything else, but it's always very messy. Moving on, the big showpiece in the middle of my desk is my beautiful Ultrawide monitor. It's the Gigabyte G34WQC, a 34-inch curved ultrawide monitor which is great for both schoolwork and video editing. There's a lot of screen real estate for having like a big video timeline across the screen or multitasking by having pages side by side for school. The 1440p resolution combined with the 144Hz refresh rate is also the perfect sweet spot to make the display both look sharp and feel buttery smooth. The color accuracy on the monitor is only decent however, with 90% of DCI-P3 coverage. I wish it could get a little brighter though, as it only gets up to around 350 nits. It also uses a VA panel, so the screen becomes washed out if you look at it from an angle, but for the price of around $500, it's decent enough. I would like to upgrade to a higher res and more color accurate IPS monitor in the future, but those are crazy expensive. Also, I have the monitor mounted on a Vivo monitor arm, which I highly recommend for everyone, especially for those of you who don't have a lot of space on their table. The floating look also makes the setup look really clean. Next to the monitor is one of my newest upgrades to the setup, the Edifier S1000DBs. These active bookshelf speakers look and sound absolutely incredible, although they are huge and weigh 20 pounds each. On each speaker, there is a 1 inch titanium dome tweeter paired with a 5.5 inch aluminum alloy bass driver, and with both speakers combined, you get a total output of 120 watts which is incredibly powerful. They fill up my whole room easily and I'm not sure if I'm even using half the volume. And as for the sound quality, I can't even describe it in words. They've got deep, punchy, and a very clear bass with beautiful mids for powerful instrumentation and vocals, while still having very crispy and airy highs. The clarity and instrument separation is also amazing, as you can easily decipher each instrument in the sound mix. They've also got a super wide sound stage, which makes you feel like you're there in person. And on the back, there are plenty of ports for you to connect to different devices, with RCA, optical, coaxial, and Bluetooth 4 with AppTech support. There's actually a new version of the speakers with a better amplifier and Bluetooth 5.0 with Aptex HD support. Also, not to flex, but these are actually rated the best bookshelf speakers by New York Times wire cutting newsletter, so it's definitely worth it if you're looking for speakers. You know what's also worth it? If you can subscribe to my channel cause I make really cool and fun tech videos which you wouldn't want to miss out. Every little sub makes a huge difference. Anyways, another upgrade I got this year was the keyboard. This is the Icky 68 Aurora, which was a custom group by Mechanical Keyboard. It's a polycarbonate gasket mount keyboard and I'm using the Boba U4T tactile switches. The board sounds awesome and here's a little sound test for all of you keyboard nerds. I currently have some cheap AliExpress keycaps on them while I'm still waiting for my Cam Super User keycap set to arrive later this year. At least the desk mount came early, which you can see underneath. And as for the mouse, I've been using the Logitech MX Master 3 for Mac, and I love it. The battery life is incredible, and I can say that I haven't charged it in over two months. The USB-C charging is also very fast, so if the battery ever dies, one minute of charging gets you around three hours of use. 
The mouse is also big and super comfortable with side buttons, a thumb button, and a side scroll wheel, which are really useful. The magnetic scroll wheel is also really cool. It's ratcheted when you scroll slowly, but smooth when you scroll fast for going through long documents. You can also set up custom profiles for each app in Logitech Options, and Logitech Flow also allows you to control three devices at once and gain the ability to transfer files between devices. One thing I dislike about the mouse is the thumb button for gestures though, as they're really hard to press and don't work most of the time. I really want a magic trackpad to put on the left side of my keyboard so I can properly use gestures. And to power my whole setup, I have the M1 MacBook Air docked behind a monitor. I chose the 7-core GPU variant with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage, but for video editing, each video takes about 500GB by itself, so I have a 1TB SanDisk Extreme external SSD to edit off of, and a 4TB Western Digital hard drive for backup. After using this laptop for a year, the performance on the M1 is still great for normal use, but for me, I keep experiencing lag, app crashes, and maxed out RAM usage during my workflow. I usually have a ton of heavy apps open, especially when I'm doing homework and content creation at the same time, which explains why the MacBook Air struggles. I definitely want to upgrade to the new MacBook Pro sometime soon, which is more fit for my heavy workflow, but it's way too expensive and I can't afford it right now. The M1 MacBook Air also only has two Thunderbolt ports, so I have this Cable Matters dock, which isn't Thunderbolt, but has all the ports I need. On the front, there's a micro SD and an SD card slot, a headphone and a mic jack, a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port, and a USB-A port, both of which support fast charging for phones and tablets. And on the back, there's a USB-C host port, three USB-A ports, Ethernet, and HDMI ports. I'm really glad that the host port that connects to my MacBook is on the back because a lot of docks have it in the front, which means that you would need to connect to your laptop from the front and then rewire it behind the table, which looks really, really ugly. Next to that, I have a DAC and amp for my speakers. This is the K5 Pro from Theo, and it's amazing. It looks very sleek with its big volume control knob, and the audio that comes out of it is very clean and neutral. There is a 6.35mm headphone jack in the front, which comes with an adapter, and on the back, there are RCA in and out ports, in addition to optical and coaxial ports for all your audio gear. I definitely want to get a nice pair of headphones in the future, though. I also have a Google Nest Mini for Google Assistant whenever I need it, and it's in Coral to match with my Pixel 6. And for decoration, I have the classic IKEA YouTuber plants that you see everywhere, with one big one on the side and two small ones on the desk. Behind the table, I've also got Govi light strips and the Govi Glide wall light, which looks absolutely beautiful. Both of them can be customized in the app with a full range of colors and effects, and they can even be controlled by Alexa or Google Assistant. And finally, the chair I used is the Steelcase Series 2. It's super comfortable, looks amazing in teal and white, and feels very premium. At $500, it's not cheap, but it's definitely worth the money to save your back, and it's also backed with a 12-year warranty. I also made a review on this chair, so you can check it out up here if you're interested. And that's all for my desk setup this year. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions about any product, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below, and also let me know what upgrades or suggestions you guys may have. And as always, smash that like and subscribe button if you liked the video. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.